the guy playing RZA, like, he just, he almost has the personality of a wet mop. <sighs> a little out of my element this morning, but, uh, on my daddy duties, man. So I was originally supposed to record this in my usual setting. My daughter tells me at the last minute she has a doctor's appointment. And if you have a teenager, you know how that shit goes. Where uh, all of a sudden, last second, oh, by the way, daddy, I need $2 million by uh, in five minutes. Sorry, daddy, I didn't mean to, ugh. The joys of parenting. So anyways, yeah. So at here, waiting to get called. So I wanted to shoot this review. As, as briefly as I can, because I gotta talk about this episode of Wu-Tang, an American saga, episode eight. If you've seen the movie Birdman with Michael Keaton, where the movie looked like it was all one take, that's the way this episode was shot. Broken up into chapters, but with each chapter, it looked like it was just one shot for each chapter, and I enjoyed the shit out of that. Spoilers, by the way, if you have not seen the show, stop this shit, watch it, come back, let's talk about it. So, yeah, man, I really appreciated the style that this shit was shot. Like, whoever is behind the creative process on this show, I'm digging this shit. Well, I'm assuming it's RZA. I know RZA is a producer on this. But I, I appreciate the artistic approach that they're taking with this. Even with the episode from, not last week, but the week before last, the one when the bird was flying around. I love that shit. Like, that was on some Hitchcock rear window type stuff. And, yeah, some people can't appreciate that. And I get it. Like, look, I'm not going to knock anybody that doesn't like get it you know what i mean i'm not gonna be like man you know you just don't know filmmaking look to each his own man you like what you like but lately i've been like i've been digging the way these episodes were shot what threw me off about this episode was rizza the actor that plays rizza and god damn it i keep saying i'm gonna look his name up and i cannot remember his name every time shit but yeah the actor that plays rizza ah uh, i can't i can't get into you know i can't get into his character i just i can't i don't i don't know man like i guess Growing up with Wu-Tang and, and knowing the different personalities, RZA is a very charismatic, you know what I'm saying, charming motherfucker. The actor that's playing RZA, all right, y'all got excuse me, there, there's a lot of landscaping going on behind me. They, they wanted to wait till I shot a video to, to do a lot of cutting grass and shit. But yeah, the guy playing RZA, like, he just, he almost has the personality of a wet mop, all right? And he spent most of this episode bitching and complaining but you know for good reason because the whole episode is your boy uh marlo is trying to get him to the big time he just signed with tommy boy and he's getting them shows in different states and shit and you know one particular scene was funny when they went to texas and they kept seeing that armadillo running around i thought that was funny i don't know man he just he just doesn't have he just doesn't capture really the essence of rizza slash bobby digital you know so that's what threw me off with this episode was the fact that i just i can't get into him i can't get into his character and another thing that kind of threw me off a little bit was the soundtrack. Though the soundtrack is ill on this show, but not one time did I feel like I was in the late 80s, early 90s. Because this is pre-Wu-Tang. And some of the songs they were playing, like, they were, at one point they was even playing Jesus Walks from Kanye. That shit then dropped to, like, the 2000s, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, even, even the fashion, the fashion and the music is, like, you know, the fashion is, like, you know, nine, like, mid-90s, you know what I mean? I, I don't I don't feel late 80s early 90s when I watch this show and I watch this episode so I, ju I just didn't get that so I feel like some of the song choices were a little but this is just me nitpicking about shit but the episode overall like I really dug it like I've, I've yet to see a TV show where they shot an episode like that where the shit was like like one one shot you know takes or whatever you know and um Ryan Coogler did the same thing with uh with Creed 1 with the the first fight that Creed had we do get more ODB in this episode, and look, I guess we're not going to get the intelligent ODB anytime soon, so I'm just like, all right, fuck it. I'm, I'm just, I'm on for the ride right now. I want to see where they go, but, you know, I mean, I don't mind his character. I say his his uh, portrayal of ODB is probably one of the more accurate of anybody else in the show. Like, ODB and uh, your boy that plays Raekwon, like, those are the only two where I'm like, okay, I know they're definitely playing those characters those members but everybody else is like eh. now comment below and let me know did did Raekwon and Ghost really have beef like that did did, Ra did Raekwon really shoot Ghost Face House up and then they became BFFs years later is that something that you, they just made up for the show let me know because I'm not I'm not 100% sure of that but uh yeah man overall man it, it was all right man it was all right you know I mean it, it was it was cool seeing how RZA got introduced to mathematics from from Jizza. 
Okay, the whole Prince Rakim thing, uh, it was cool seeing the whole behind the scenes, what happened with that, because yeah, he went from Prince Rakim, the ladies' man, to the fucking grave diggers, horror rap, and then, you know, the 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 mathematics Wu-Tang, you know what I mean? So it was cool seeing what happened with the Rakim character and, and how he really didn't want to play that character anyway, and how the original version uh, got scrapped because they couldn't clear the um they couldn't clear the uh the sample. So the way the episode ended, Tommy Boy drops Rakim, you know, Marlon had to come give him the bad news, and so uh, now I guess we see the true birth of the Wu-Tang Clan. We have two episodes left, so hey, let's see where they go with this shit, man. But overall, man, dug it, man, digging the season so far, started out kind of rocky, now I'm like, all right, I'm kind of invested. So y'all, what are y'all thoughts on this new episode of Wu-Tang in America Saga? Sorry about the landscape in the background, they don't give a fuck about me doing a video. This is Rashad G signing out. See you in the next video.